This is footage for the density lab for my physics classes. Uh, what we have here are the same five samples that we use for the calorimetry part two experiment. Uh, aluminum, zinc, copper, lead, and tin going from left to right here. And uh, what we're gonna be doing with this, uh, we're gonna be determining the density of these substances uh, from these samples. Now, uh, as you know, the density formula is given by mass divided by volume, where the mass is given in kilograms and the volume is typically given in cubic meters. It could be given also in center, uh, grams per cubic centimeter, but in this case here, we're gonna be working with uh, uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So let's go ahead and get started here. First off, uh, let me go ahead and measure the masses of these various substances here. That'll be the easiest thing to do. Um, we have here, a scale behind everything. So I'll move everything forward here. And I'll put this up here like so. This is the aluminum sample. All right, again, um, the screws or the, the, the hooks that was up that were up here, these things, are removed because we want to try to get a pure number for the sample here. Uh, the hooks would actually uh, change that value. So uh, here is the mass of aluminum. Let's put in the center there to make sure that we're getting a proper view uh, measurement of this, All right? So there's the mass for that one. The next sample is zinc, this one here. Move it to the center. Third one is copper. Fourth one is lead. And the fifth one is tin. So now that we have the masses of the samples, we're going to uh, get the measurements of the dimensions of the cylinder itself, of each of the samples, so we can calculate the volume. If you remember, the volume uh, formula for cylinder is pi r squared times L, where um, r is the radius of the circle associated with the top of the cylinder. And so um, half of the diameter, in other words, of this, this thing here. So, and um, L is the length of the cylinder going from bottom to top here. Uh, we'll take that measurement as well. So let's move this out of the way and bring these back here. And we'll do these one at a time. We'll be using this device here. This is a caliper, uh, digital caliper. Uh, we turn it on by pushing a button here and it measures things in millimeters. And we wanna make sure that this is uh, calibrated property. So we bring these close together like that, push the zero button to zero it, and then we're ready to go. And we're, we'll be measuring this in millimeters here. Let's go ahead and take the aluminum cylinder Put it inside the calipers here. So I'm measuring diameter. So you're gonna to have to take this number here and divide by two to get the radius. So that was that one. For the zinc, in fact, all these samples are gonna be very similar, all right, because they're about the same size. Uh, here is the diameter of zinc. the diameter of copper, diameter of the lead sample, and finally, the diameter of the tin sample. We also need, uh, so we took the diameter, so make sure you divide those by two. And note that these are in millimeters, they have to be converted to meters, all right, for your measurements. Now the next thing we do is measure the lengths of these things. So this is aluminum, the length of the aluminum, going from the top to bottom here. It's given as this number here. For zinc, the length of the cylinder is given as this number. For the copper, 
this number. For lead, it's given us this number. And for tin, we get this for L. All right, now that's sufficient data for you to calculate the density of these various things. But we also need one more bit of information. Since each of these samples uh, used to have a hook on top and the hook has been removed, you know, the ones that are over here, uh, they've been removed, all right? And so there's a little hole here, uh, which is gonna be a significant chunk of material that's taken out of the cylinder. And so in your lab outline that I, hand, uh, that I gave you, uh, there should be information about the amount of volume that that takes up. All right. So whatever volume you get for the cylinder, you're going to need to subtract off that small amount of the hole that's inside each of the samples there. All right. And we're assuming each of the samples will have the same amount taken away uh, from each of these things here. Now, just to note, this one here had a broken hook. All right. Remember from the, the lab that we did. OK. And so this is a little bit problematic because the sample uh, is going to be a little bit off because of that. The stuff on the material, uh, material in the inside there is not tin, it's something else. Um, and I couldn't remove it. And so this actually has the thing filled in here. So you're gonna have to make your best guess, right, of how to approach this issue here. Um, we can just assume that this has no hole and then the material here uh, is almost tin. And that will throw our numbers off a little bit, but it might be your, your, your closest guess for this thing here, right? If you have another solution on how to figure this out, that'd be great. Um, but I don't know what the, the material, material for the hooks are. I believe it's brass, but I'm not certain. Uh, so we'll leave that up to you to sort of like decide in your groups how you want to approach that. But um, this should give you enough information here, along with the, uh, the information about the holes, which are given in the uh, outline. That should give you enough of information to figure out the density of these five substances. All right.